Good blessed Wednesday, uh, July the 10th, 2024. It's about 1240 uh, p.m. in the afternoon. I greet all human beings all around the world with a universal greetings of peace and the blessing of God be with you. It doesn't matter what your political, philosophical, personal, nor your religious beliefs may be. It doesn't matter whether you're the richest or the poorest person on the face of this earth. It doesn't matter whether you're the proclaimed toughest or the proclaimed weakest person on the face of this earth. It doesn't matter if you're my family, friends, nor my proclaimed enemies. It doesn't matter whether you like me or anything that I say or do. That's your prerogative. You have a first uh, amendment to the United States Constitution of freedom of press, freedom of speech, freedom to uh, protest, freedom to gather, and freedom to associate. I always let people know ahead of time, if you on probation or parole, it all depends who you are, uh, you need to check with your local uh, law enforcement officials or your probation and parole officers to see if y'all able to uh, gather together or associate together while you're on probation or parole or while you're a felon. But what I want to talk about right now, I want y'all to pay close attention to everything that come after me get through speaking. Uh, a police field report and then uh, from uh, 2000 and uh, I believe 22 and then a, a, uh, some, some videos back from 2016 for people that say that I'm a racist. This will show you I ain't a racist because I'm going interviewing a white female who has a complaint about another white individual, a police, a used to be police officer by the name uh, Brent uh, Douglas. Brent Douglas also was a captain down in East Prairie. He went down there with Mark Higgins, another crook, uh, who won the, the sheriff election down in East Prairie, Missouri, and brought Brent, uh, Brent Douglas down there with him as his captain. Both of them was officers on the Charles, Missouri Police Department up under Robert Hearns, another crook, the Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan in this area. Uh, but anyway, he, he stayed for one term and the people wasn't satisfied with him. 99% white down there. People not, wasn't satisfied with him. Not even his dispatcher. A female, she ran against him and won and she kicked both of their behind. She took that chief off of his, uh, 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 his shoulder and took them two bars, the captain bars, off of Brent Douglas and sent them right back down here to the drawing board to Charleston, Missouri. You can be a criminal and come be a police. And this ain't saying this about all police on there because there's some good ones on there. But I want y'all to pay close attention because, see, uh, Brent Douglas was a witness in a murder case where a black guy was charged with killing a, a, a white individual in East Prairie. The white individual happened to be a Brent Douglas business partner. Brent Douglas know this guy was on methamphetamine. You know what I mean? Brent Douglas know he had issues, but I mean, may he rest in peace and I still pray for his family, for whoever killed him, but the individual that they got for killing him, uh, Brent Douglas chased him down here in Charleston, Missouri, and so happened to find a nine millimeter bullet in his pocket. After he done came from, uh, allegedly came from 10 miles away from here, the guy that he got the bullet from. Brent Douglas did something that police officers don't normally do, especially on the Charles, Missouri Police Department. He said he took a residue, gun residue test when he stopped the guy, when he chased the guy down and caught him and took a residue test. But it's three elements be on there and there's only one element on there in a professional testify from the uh, state uh, Missouri State Highway Patrol said a likelihood is slim to none that a person can been done shot somebody 15 times and only have one element on there and, wasn't, and, 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 and was left from the scene of the crime for less than 20 minutes. But, you know, we believe that Brent, Brent Douglas put that bullet in his evidence bag saying he got it from this guy. We be Brent Douglas is a racist. The white female will let you know because she was married to a black guy. You just watch the rest of this about Brent Douglas. What he did when, when, when individuals were shooting flares and things at my house that hit my car, shot them at me and it, it was on camera. 
Brent Douglas was called twice, 11 o'clock at night on uh, December the 21st, 2022. And then about three something in the morning on December the 22nd, 2022. And guess what? He didn't write no report. But a 30-year veteran on December the 23rd, 2022, when I flagged him down and told him about it, he wrote a supplemented report that he was going to add on to Brent Douglas' supposed to have been report, and he couldn't find it. Y'all check it out. Brent Douglas set this black guy up. Another reason he set him up, because the, the white girl that lied and testified that said that this individual shot and killed this individual, she was seeing a black guy and a white guy, and Brent, uh, Brent Douglas don't like it when you dealing with black, uh, white females dealing with black females. I mean, a uh, black, uh, 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 white females dealing with black guys in this girl from 2016 to show you that y'all pay close attention. We need the feds to come in and investigate these people. Any lawyers that got anything, uh, cases that Brent Douglas, Barry Morgan, uh, John Blakely, Chief Robert Hearns, uh, who else, uh, 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 yeah, we said Captain, uh, no, Brent Fra Brenton uh, uh, Farrow. Y'all check him out, y'all. Y'all speak up. Get your cameras out. Some of these police is crooked. Not all. You can't blame all of them for it. Y'all check it out. 50 in the afternoon. We're here on Iron Banks and Squint. Right here on the corner of Iron Banks and Squint in Charleston, Missouri. I'm here with Brandy. Nicole Lawrence. How you doing, Brandy? Hello. Brandy Nicole Lawrence have a story that most of all of my activists, especially my uh, animal activists, uh, she have a story to tell about an animal of hers that was just shot by one of the Charleston, Missouri police uh, officers. And I'm not saying all Charleston, Missouri police officers are bad, but the chief, and his captain need to train police to handle humans as well as dogs. Brandy, tell us your story. What happened? The police was coming over to uh, detain one of my animals, which was a male dog that was in my backyard. I had gotten rid of him already. My, my female dog, Rose, had come outside. She came outside and was sitting out here on the ground barking at the officer, which she had passed the dog catcher that was standing by the stairs. Now the dog catcher was standing right on the stairs. Was standing right on okay. the stairs. Okay. She walked right past him. All righty. Now tell us what happened after that. He, she's standing right here. This is the dog that got shot. Was standing yes. right here. Was standing right here. Which you okay, can see you can blood. see blood. You can see blood on the... Uh... On this rock. Okay. And she's standing there just barking at him. Because he's standing there looking suspicious. No, doing to him. something normal, what any dog would do. Yes. Especially if they don't know you or they had a bad encounter with you before. Exactly. Is it one of the two or both? It's both because he has come over here several times messing with us. When you say messing with you, you think it's a sign of harassment? Yes, sir, I do. Because are, are you, are you uh, 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 not standing on the racial side, but are you engaged or married to someone uh, other than a, a white person? Yes, he's, my husband is African American. He's African American, he's black. And do your, did, did your husband have any encounter with this particular yes, police officer? this police officer had been over my house numerous amount of times harassing my husband. Trying to make him do what? Trying to make him tell on people around trying here. Trying to make him to be a snitch. Yes. And he refused to do it. And he refused to is do it. Is he locked up now? Yes, because he would not snitch on me. And what is this officer's name? Officer Douglas. Officer Douglas. Now tell us what Officer Douglas did when, when, your, when, when your dog was out here. The dog catcher is there. He should yes. be trained. They have tasers and things like yes. that. Was any other officer besides the, the uh, dog at, catcher at that time? At the time, Okay, no. now what happened then? Um, Douglas pulled his gun out. Officer Douglas pulled his gun out. Where was he standing? He was standing right here. He was standing right here. Okay, now go where did your dog got shot at. Right here. Okay. Right now, here. how many children you said that was out here? There was nine children. Where at? In the area? Okay, there just was point. Right, there was right here. About nine children. Okay, come back here. Tell us, tell us what Douglas did. Did he, did he tase the dog? No, he pulled out his gun 
and shot her twice in the face. Twice in the face. Where is your dog at now? Is the dog she, dead? No, she's at the vet. At the vet in, in Sykes, in Missouri. Yeah, and she's in surgery right now. Right now. Did you did you have to pay for the vet bill to, to, to take your dog to the emergency room? Yes, I have to pay. It's gonna be five to six hundred dollars. Okay, did someone did the did the city pay for that part and in the surgery or did they is they paying for any of it? Um, they said they're gonna pay for just the emergency, emergency visit. Yeah. But then that they fair and then did the chief of police tell you to do something in particular? He told me. Bobby uh, Hearns, that yeah, is. Bobby Hearns told me I should sue the city and Mr. Douglas. Sue the city and the, this is the chief of police told chief you you need police. to sue his particular officer in the city who he works for. Yes. Later on, did any other police come? Yes, there was. You don't have to name. Friday, April the 1st, 2016. And the time being 6.50 p.m. We're in Charleston, Missouri. We are on uh, Iron Banks and Squint. We back over here with Brandy Nicole Lawrence. I told you about the story on the 29th of uh, March at about six something uh, p.m. in Charleston, Missouri. Her dog was shot by police on her own property. There was a dog catcher, if you look on this porch here, it was a dog catcher right by the door where the dog came out of his own house, walked around this tree and came somewhere in this area and the police was on this side of the dog and out of all the people, the dog barked at the police, but he didn't try to attack it. It was a natural instinct from a dog being misused or abused by somebody or a person being a stranger. But what we want to talk to you about today, we talked to you about the dog got shot twice in the face. The dog had surgery the next day on March the 30th, 2016. The dog just died, sadly to say. Brandy, when the dog died, today or yesterday? It was yesterday she died. She had internal bleeding, so she started using the bathroom and all it was was blood coming out, so she went ahead and passed away. What I wanna do is show you all a picture when the dog, when, when the dog was, when, when the dog was uh, shot and walking around in the house while uh, Brandy was trying to get the dog to a hospital. We want to show you that after we show you the dog walking around after it was shot, we want to also show you the police after he done shot the dog twice, then he decided to step off the side of the property. When you take a look at that, we want to show you something else in a minute. Okay, now that you've seen that, that was the officer that shot him. Brandy said there was children's out here and there was an 11 month old child, maybe a little older or maybe a little younger, has to go to a specialist because of the sound of the shooting did something to his eardrums. But what we wanna do now, we are appealing to all animal activists, all animal attorneys and all of my activist friends. We need you to support Brandy. Brandy and her children's is suffering because of the loss of their dog. And the sad thing about it, the dog that got shot wasn't the dog that the police came to retrieve. He didn't even come to retrieve it. He sent the dog catcher. A dog catcher is supposed to be trained to take dogs. That's why they call him dog catcher. He should have had a taser if this dog was vicious, but the dog couldn't have been vicious because he walked right past the dog catcher. And the dog catcher, I'm not trying to say nothing about him, the dog catcher, give or take, weights about 350 to 400 pounds. And if he thought the dog was a threat, he would have shot the dog or tased the dog. We just want to say that this is part three of the injustice that was done to Brandy's dog. And we asking all of you all to pray for Brandy and her family because this is affecting them mentally. Do you want to say something to the people right now? I just want this to get out and the word to be out that the justice system is messed up and that we need help out here for our animals. 
and for our children because it happened in front of our children we just we just need the word out and i need y'all's help please and and we we want to let you all know that not all the charleston police department but some of them they have threatened a cameraman that i used to have on may the 19th of 2015 because we was videoing the violence in this town so you imagine what they're going to try to do to Brandy. They may come to try to attack her on the legal side, saying something concerning her children or her. But we know right now that Brandy is an upstanding citizen. And whatever they come to do, we want her to report it to us so we can report it to you. But I want to show you them pictures of that dog one more time. We want to show you the picture of that dog one more time. What was the dog name? Rose. Rose. Rose was harmless. Look at this picture, y'all. Look at it real good. Look at that officer. Get a good look at that officer standing out there on the outside after he done committed this crime against this dog. We asking all of y'all to support us, to get the word out. We want you to get the word out. Brandy, we're praying for you. Thank you very much. And I, I know what you're going through, and I know what your children's going through. A.M. Charleston, Missouri time. We're back here in Charleston, Missouri on Iron Bank and Swank over here interviewing Brandy Nicole Lawrence, who, if you remember the story, we did two, three parts, part one, two, and three of her, about her dog being shot by a Charleston, Missouri police uh, officer which it was unjustifiable because the dog wasn't attacking. The dog was on their own property. It was a dog catcher out here. And plus, it was the wrong dog that the dog catcher came for. It wasn't the dog catcher who killed him. It was a police officer that killed him. But Brandy, I told Brandy on the third interview that they may retaliate for the fact that, number one, she complaining about what a Charleston, Missouri police officer done. Not all Charleston, Missouri police officers are corrupted. But I know the chief is, I know the captain is, and I know all of his high-ranking uh, uh, officers are. But they also will retaliate, I told her, because of the fact that I'm reporting this here. I don't care what your nationality is. I report stories for people that KFVS 12 won't report and, and that the local news people won't report. Brandy, tell us, have anything happened since the last time that I interviewed you, which was on April the 1st, 2016? Yes, I have been Speak served. Speak louder. I have been served with an eviction notice. An eviction notice? Yes. How long have you been living here? I've been living here over a year. Have you ever had any problem with talking about an eviction? No, sir. So what is, what, is, what is the reason for you being uh, uh, getting an eviction notice? I had asked the landlord what the reason was. She said because, Look at the people. Look because at the people. there's been numerous police officers coming to my home. Now, you said numerous police officers. Which has, is has, just one. And what officers is that? Douglas. Is, and they, did Officer Douglas do something in particular with your husband and your dog or anything else? Yes, he's got my husband in prison and killed my dog. Killed your dog. Shot your dog. Yes. And the dog was here right on his own property. Yes. Okay. Now, what else you were saying? And, and then um, I'm also sitting out here with my children day before yesterday. And we counted. Today is Friday, so that was Wednesday. Wednesday. And we counted 20 Four times the police officer rode through here down the street in front of my house. Twenty-four times. So that was on the sixth Wednesday. Twenty-four times riding past your house. Yes. Do I you still... know you've been here a year? Have yes. you normally seen anything like that? No. So do you think that you being evicted is because of of of, of 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 the police coming around, or is it you think that the police have influence with some of the people in this town? I believe the police have influence with some of the people in this town, including my neighbors, because they've called. Now, who is your neighbor? I, supposedly supposed to have been uh, a mayor of now, where Charleston. At? Oh, here, here in Charleston. Yeah, used to be a mayor of Charleston. So now they're harassing me about and taking pictures of my child. So now you have you and your children have to find another place to to live, you, 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 you already going through sadness for losing your dog. But I want to tell the people that I can identify with what Brandy is talking about because on May the 19th, 2015, 
Uh, Charleston, Missouri sergeant and two other police officers threatened my cameraman, Buck Whitney, because we was videoing the crime and things and what the police wasn't doing here in Charleston. So I know they'll retaliate. They retaliated against me when I went up against the Charleston, Missouri uh, R1 school district in the Charleston, Missouri Police Department for uh, letting a white bus driver do something to my then five-year-old daughter on February the 1st. 2012, which nothing is still done. They had brought DCF in my house saying that I was supposed to be doing something to my daughter. That didn't happen. They said they had an anonymous phone call. But I want you all to watch this video. Help support Brandy. She don't know where her and her family going to next. Brandy, you have anything to tell the people before we go? I just need y'all support. I need y'all to watch these videos, comment on these videos. Help me, please. Help me and my family. And continue to watch because they gonna probably retaliate again. Yes. When they retaliate against me, the federal government is watching these people that's, that's been trying to attack me. I'm going to leave you right now, but I'm going to tell you the connection. The Charleston R1 School District, the Charleston Police Department, City Hall, the court, the, the, the Mississippi County Courthouse, Lester Gillespie, Suzanne Wesley Family Learning Center, and Sherry Maxwell in the Lincoln University. All of them tied together. I want y'all to take a close look at this here. Uh incident uh, report or this field report, which is a follow-up uh, uh, for a complaint that I made on December the 21st and the 22nd of uh, uh, 2022. Uh, and Brent Douglas was the police officer from the Charles, Missouri Police Department that showed up and didn't write a report at all. Brent Douglas, once upon a time, he used to work for the Charles, Missouri Pol uh, Police Department. And then he followed Mark Higgins, who was an officer at the Charles, Missouri Police Department. They went to East Prairie because Mark Higgins had uh, ran for police chief and won. And he brought Brent Douglas from Charleston, Missouri Police Department to East Prairie uh, uh, Police Department some 10, 11 miles away, and he made, Mark Higgins made uh, Brent Douglas his uh, his captain. But I'm going to show you, we know how crooked Mark Higgins is. Both of them, the next time it went up for election, the dispatcher, a female, uh, beat Mark Higgins out and sent Mark Higgins, the formal chief, and his captain right back to the drawing board to Charles, Missouri Police Department to be police officers. But I'm going to show you this. Then I'm going to show you uh, a white female complaining about uh, Brent Douglas. In 2016, she going to tell you how he races because she was white, married to a black man, and she going to show you how he did her. And then you look how he did me when I made a complaint twice and you will see the dates. This officer here, McDermott, uh, 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 Wes McDermott is a, uh, 30 year plus, uh, police officer to Ch for the Charles, Missouri police department. He should be chief because he's honest to me. I don't care what somebody else say. I done seen him being honest and doing his job. Criminals that's breaking the law, maybe not like him, but I ain't seen nothing that he did wrong. Ain't nobody brought no complaints to me. But I told him about the 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 uh, two calls that Brent Douglas came to, and each time they called, West West did some research, and the and the dispatcher did some research, and look at this report, and he tell me why is it was nothing documented, nothing at all, on on uh. December the 23rd, 2022, I was flagged down at 613 Vine Street. I called in to Department of Public Safety Communications and had an incident started for a request to speak to officer. This person flagged me down is known to me as Raymond Lewis Ivy, black male. Ivy was giving me some information about some possible suspects that had thrown eggs and shot a flare at his house on 12-21-22. Ivy told me that he had 
already reported it to a, 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 a public safety officer, Kirkendow, and public safety officer, uh, Brent Douglas. Ivy also mentioned that several others had eggs thrown at their property. Uh, Ivy told me that he was told by, but I'm not going to tell you the information of the people who told me because I don't mind letting it be known that I called them on him because it's better for me to call them on him and then, then to send them to the graveyard. Ivy was unable to, lo I mean, I was unable to, this is the police officer, 30 year veteran. I was unable to locate any report or other documentation that I could add this information to. He was going to add this information to what I, uh, uh, to the, to the supposed to have been report that Douglas should have made. I, I made calls to DP, uh, DPS communication on both days. These were, and the first day was December the 21st. Uh, uh, he said uh, uh, December the 21st, uh, 2022, uh, at uh, 2313 hours. That's, I think, about 1113. But I want to show you uh, uh, who who was responsible. I I made a a a uh, complaint against both officers, but I dropped mine against Officer Kirkendall because Kirkendall was backing up Douglas, which Douglas should have wrote it. It's, it. This is the incident, the first incident report uh, for all lawyers that that have anybody that Brent Douglas uh, has testified against. To show you not only is he a racist, but he won't do his job when it comes to uh, blacks being something being done to blacks. But he will if it's a white, a black been been done, done something to a white. But this is the incident report. But like I said, Kirkendall, I dropped it on him, uh, but I didn't drop it on Douglas. This is the second incident report from December the 22nd, 2022. And the reason why I'm showing y'all this here, because Brent Douglas just recently uh, testified in a murder case where a black guy was allegedly supposed to have uh, shot and killed a white guy in East Prairie, Missouri. And Brent Douglas was the business partner with the white guy that got killed. He knowing the white guy is on meth and, and other things. Uh, but Brent, uh, uh, Brent Douglas, instead of trying to help this guy, he still allowed the guy to be on this meth and do other things out in the streets and still being his business partner. If you're going to be a person business partner and you a law enforcement official and you know he's getting high off of meth, you would think that you would try to get him some rehab first. But Brent Farrow, uh, not Brent Farrow, but Brenton Douglas is the one chased it, the so the alleged suspect who killed his business partner in East Prairie and caught him here in Charleston, Missouri, and allegedly found a nine millimeter uh, bullet in the individual's pocket. Ain't no body cam to show that. And the reason why I'm saying I believe uh, Brent Douglas put the bullet if he found the bullet in his pocket, Brent uh, Brenton Douglas put it in his pocket or he had a nine millimeter bullet and just to try to match it up to say uh, that this guy killed his business partner. But Brent Douglas is a racist towards blacks. Uh, and you can see from this the video when you listen to this white female in 2016 showing you he shot her dog in the face two times in front of 16 children and the dog was no threat to him. Brent Douglas probably set this young man up who just got natural life without any parole. Brent Douglas also took a field test of residue and it didn't even meet three of the characters. That told you something, ain't it? Brent Douglas is a racist. Brent Douglas probably set him up. He was trained uh, with Mark Higgins and uh, Robert Hearns, which both of them are crooks. 
We see what Mark Higgins and, and, and Robert Hearns did with two cases. A white guy threatened my life. And the, the police report never went to the to the uh to the prosecuting attorney or the judge. And the white guy that threatened me is on six year paper. Ain't that something? Why they didn't do like they did with this brother, this black guy? You know why? Because they are racist. Y'all check it out. <laughs> Look how dark it just got. Oh my god, look at it. Oh my gosh. Let me put my glasses on. I can't even see. Oh my gosh. Look, I'm hooked. Look, look, look. look. I'm not going blind. My fucking phone ain't blowing. My type of work, y'all. Saving lives. 